yeah, la, it's just very uh, a very tricky situation when it comes to things about skin color and all. La. Okay, I think I know what, what I'm going to get you for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to dress as for Halloween. Really. <laughs> Here's a costume that I can wear that you can't. Yeah. <laughs> That is true, man. That yeah, is true. Yeah. No, my my Halloween costume is, is quite fixed this year. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. What? Uh, some sweet woman with a cigarette. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yala. Ba, 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 ba. Your thrice weekly podcast where we talk about the hottest news with a touch of what, Terrence? Good old humor. Good old humor, man. Yeah. How's the week been, man? A uh, new setup in the space. Oh, yeah? Uh, if you look behind Harish, for those watching the video, mm. we moved some things around. Yeah. Uh, you don't see Muna's face. Angry Muna. <laughs> Angry Muna's face <laughs> Angry in the Muna. background anymore. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just refreshing things a little bit. La. Yeah. Not not because we like uh, took out and disposed of that poster for our she, She's a Terrorist TV show. It's because we put it outside our studio. Yeah, yeah. So when people come in, they can see it in all its glory. La. Yeah, yeah. But and even to behind me, there's not much going on, la, right? Yeah. yeah we're yeah. just thinking of ways to spruce up the studio a little it, bit. La. Yeah, yeah. I mean, kind yeah. of matches like the, you know, the, the vibe, la, you know? But. Like the visual vibe of of you lah, you know. Keep going, keep going. Yeah. <laughs> explain, explain. <laughs> What's the joke behind it? Explain. Oh no, like you know, yeah. it's very like a uh, minimalist, mm. very focused. Yes. Yeah, focused. Focus. Yeah, very, yeah, yeah. Lay everything out there. Not yeah. cluttered lah. Not, yeah, not cluttered. Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. Like, not like a thousand things going on. A thousand things time. going on, you know, at the back of your head. And yeah, you yeah. cannot put it out in words and something. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Correct, correct. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where you think I was going with that. Yeah. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, there will be changes. There yeah. will be changes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I mean, we're also speaking to some people who yeah. might be helping with the changes. Yeah, if anybody like, you know, wants to help us spruce up this place as yeah. well as ideas, yeah. uh, you know, we're happy to talk. Yeah. Totally happy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, um, I mean, interesting week. I think like uh, now every day, I can't even keep up with the news um, uh, around Kamala Harris and Joe Biden, man. Yeah, but it's fun. It's eh? too much. It's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's fun. Really it's fun. fun. Yeah. It's yeah. more exciting than watching Game of Thrones, uh, like yeah. the latest season. Yeah. Yeah. Because now she's, uh, she's got a bunch of memes also mm. uh, and mashups with like the, who's the musician? I mean, a lot of old clips being dug up. Uh, uh, the CYX or something. Charlie X. Oh, Charlie X. CYX. CYX. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where that came from, uh. yeah, yeah, CYX, yeah. Charlie X, XCX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, la, for, fun to watch la, from, from your, not not fully yet aware of how it might change the world or, mm. or the repercussions. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Donald Trump, back to his, like, oh, very personal attack. La. Mm, mm, uh, very personal attack. Things. And JD Vance also, like, the lifting the lid on who he is as a person. You know? Yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. correct. And I think the Olympics also starting soon. Mm, correct. Right. Yeah, they're now highlights all the football matches that you can watch. Oh, started already. Mm, mm. And then there was a very big controversy with the Argentina-Morocco game. Oh, yeah. Uh, where they restarted a match because of a, the last minute goal was ruled offside. They restarted a match like an hour later or something like that. Mm. So the stands were empty when the match finished. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Weird, uh. yeah. Oh, correct, correct. Then I was watching, uh, I mean, reading some account of the Singapore athletes there. Yeah. Uh, and I think the rower, uh, her name is Aisha. Mm. She was just talking about how uh, one of the coolest things about being at the Olympic Village is you kind of get star starstruck by some of the athletes. Like, and she mm. said she bumped into Carlos Alcaraz. Oh, Alcaraz, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I guess he's, like tennis, uh, even Federer, Djokovic all played in the Olympics before, right? Yes. Or they, they, they. So, yeah. Like a lot of the other sports, you know, you get people who are not even full-time athletes mm -hmm. uh, representing their countries. Yeah. But you also get some superstars. And tennis is probably one of the sports where you would see people like this. La. Yeah, so I think Alcaraz, Alcar uh, Alcar because Al oh, Alcaraz. Pronounce the Z, right? Uh, I think he specifically said he wants the full like Olympic uh, experience. So staying in the village was a thing for him. Because oh. like Djokovic is not staying in the village, for example. Oh, I see. see Alcaraz is like, what, 21 years old? So he's like, oh, whatever, man. I mean, he's going to soak up the, the stardom. La. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. amongst the stars, I mean, we don't have a Usain Bolt anymore. Yeah. Right? We don't have Michael Phelps. Yeah. So I was trying to think, who else is like a superstar that's going to be in the Olympic village? Mm, mm. And Carlos uh, Alcaraz is uh, probably one of the biggest ones. La. Yeah. And he just came off the Wimbledon win, right? Correct, correct. And uh, I think some, I think like Jungle Jimbo was pointing out that uh, Kwa Ting Wen uh. is making videos of oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. the Olympic the Olympic village and all yeah, yeah. yeah and they all seem in good spirits I think Gan Ching was in the video also oh is it okay uh, yeah. So, yeah. so good spirits exciting huh? like they just show the room the setup then there's a Singapore flag outside the window so I guess when if you look out of your 
uh, apartment, you see all the different flags yeah. across all the apartments. Uh. Wow, oh, that's fun. It's, it's, like, easy, it's yeah. like going to the, it's a small world exhibit at Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I mean, I found, uh, I was reading a Reddit AM yeah, because when I saw that video, I was like, hey, like just I just Google like Olympic Village, uh, AMA Reddit, and quite a lot of people sharing their accounts. Uh, oh, uh, of like what it's like to be in the Olympic Village. Uh. Their accounts meaning whose accounts? Uh, the no, the Olympians yeah, accounts. Yeah, Olympians see, see. Uh, okay, okay. accounts and perspectives. Uh. So was it a you, dream for you, like it would have been a dream for you to be at Olympics and all? Uh? No, I think when I was younger, it was just to play professional football. Uh. Oh really? Like like anyone who plays football, oh, yeah, you yeah, dream yeah. like Olympics wasn't the thing like it was to oh, play yeah. professional football. Because Olympics yeah. is not even a priority in the football calendar uh, not, that much, uh, right? It's yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's not. Uh, so yeah, that's, that was never a dream, mm-hmm. Uh But yeah, I mean, interesting, exciting to watch. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, like uh, uh, all the best to the Singapore athletes. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Shanti cool, Pereira. Man. Shout out to Shanti Pereira. Yeah. Hope she's uh, former watching. Yalabad guest. Yeah, getting enough episodes of Modern Family in to. <laughs> And cold showers in the morning. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but cool. Like, what do we have to say to people who are listening to Yellow at this moment? Uh, that if you are new to the podcast or you've been listening for a while, uh, it'd be great if you can subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, follow us on Spotify, check us out on social media. Because the more content you consume of ours, hopefully you enjoy it. Uh, mm. The more it will feed the algorithm and tell them that yo, you got to show this to more people. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to work with us, what yeah. can we do, Terry? Contact us at ministryoffunny.com. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. All right. Cool, cool, cool. cool. So this this week is like the, the week of buyouts and mergers and acquisitions. Eh? Mm, mm. Uh, we last episode we talked about like uh income insurance potentially being uh, having a majority stake sold to Alliance. Mm. But the latest news today is that uh Grab and Transca- Transcap mm. uh, have both pulled out from the uh, supposed plans to for Grab to buy Transcap. Yeah. Uh, and this was after a series of um, discussions with the Competition and Consumer Commission of Singapore. Mm. Uh, and I think ba- way back, I think it was episode 449, we actually covered uh, it when it first was announced that Grab is planning to buy Transcap. About a year ago. Right? About a year ago, yeah. July 2023. Mm. So, I mean, this is one year on, they pulled out. Uh, mm. What made you want to talk about this, Terence? Um, I think it's interesting because uh, there was a there have been a lot of criticisms of like uh, the competition watchdog in Singapore, especially in the aftermath of uh, Uber and Grab merging, like, Right, mm. uh, where where you know Uber exited industry, and then it ended up um, being found. They they ended up being fined uh, for for basically anti competitive behavior, like, Right, mm. in that in that whole process. So a lot of people are like. Yeah, this is Singapore Inc. You know these things happen, and the competition watchdog is toothless. There's nothing. There's mm. nothing to it. But this piece of news bucks that trend, right? Mm. And tells you that hey, maybe there there is some teeth to some of these uh, so-called watchdogs uh, that we have in Singapore. Yeah, because I mean the full timeline, right? Um, Grab announced on July twentieth, twenty twenty three, that they plan to acquire <coughs> Transcap Holdings Limited, uh, and it was hundred percent acquisition. Like. Yeah. Uh, and Transcap at the time was Singapore's third largest taxi operator with over 2,500 vehicles. Mm. Then, uh, July 21st, the day after, the Consumer Competition and Consumer Commission of Singapore, uh, we'll just refer to it as CCCS, not CCS, CCCS, mm. uh, began its review. Uh, and then, the, you know, Grab, Transcap provided details about businesses and their own thoughts of how the impact uh, will be on the market. Yeah. Then, January 31st, 2024, um, they, the CCCS announced that they would do a phase two uh, mm-hmm. to go more in-depth because uh, that they weren't satisfied with the input given by Grab and Transcap. And yeah. they said, you know what? Give us uh, 120, day, 120 more days and we're going to do another in-depth review. Mm. Then they asked for public feedback, uh, which I wasn't aware of. Mm. Uh, you could go to their website and give public feedback on uh, this whole uh, plan um, acquisition. Yeah. Then July 11th, they expressed concerns that the merger would substantially weaken competition mm. uh, because Grab is really the biggest player in the market. Yeah. And just a mere like 11 days later, Grab mm. and Transcap said, you know what, we're not going to go ahead. Mm. So yeah, it really was a case of the CCCS kind of doing an, a review, then another review, mm. seeking feedback from the public, giving a re- uh, recommendation that, you know, 
they don't think it is in the best interest of Singapore and yeah. the two companies pulling out. Yeah. Which yeah. is different from the Grab and Uber because they just, that one they went ahead mm. despite not getting approval. Yeah. And they were fined, I think, 13 million. Yeah. Because Uber essentially was shutting down, I yeah. mean, at least like winding up operations here. Already. And I think that one they left also without approval. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so that whole thing was damn messy. But like. it's hard to, I mean, if you're just going to leave already, yeah. there's not much approval that needs to be sought for that already, like, right? Well, I mean, you're in a relationship, you just leave like, oh, you know, uh, it's called ghosting. Yeah, you go, go, ghosting, Uber ghosting. It happens all the time. <laughs> but it, it still hurts. Every day. Of course it hurts. It still yeah, hurts. Yeah. It still hurts a lot. Yeah, there was a lot of concern back then about, yeah, la, the fact that uh, there was less competition already. La, yeah, right? yeah. And at, at that point, I think, I'm not sure if Gojek was a big player at that point in time yet. I think it was they, coming up. They're just coming in or they just entered the market. Actually, that was like the golden age of ride hailing in Singapore. When you say golden age, because the consumers were yeah. getting all the vouchers. Oh, right? The offers were insane. <laughs> like, they were all cutting each other's throats. Mm. But for a consumer, it was great. Yeah. And yeah. I know Uber always had promos, Grab had promos. Um, sometimes it would be cheaper to take Grab than public transport. Mm. Mm. Uh, yeah. But the moment they emerged, then all the promos all for Uber and yeah. Grab yeah. went. Uh, so, I mean, but that was the, the modus operandi, right? Even of Uber, like to seduce people into the, using the app. Um, and then after that, just, you yeah, know, once, once they're actually in the ecosystem and they establish a network already, mm. then you cut all these incentives, like, right? Mm, mm, mm. Uh, it doesn't apply just to <clears throat> just to consumers, but also even drivers also, like, right? Mm. The, all the incentives for drivers as well. Mm. So, yeah, it's just... I think that that left a very bad taste in a lot of Singaporeans' mouths, like, right? Mm. Um there's a, I mean, you go online, general, the general sentiment towards uh, Grab isn't 100% positive, like, right? yeah. far from it, like, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I think a lot of people are reacting to this news, like, surprised, that They were surprised that, oh, actually, the watchdog was doing its job of yeah. watching for competition. Dog got some teeth, <laughs> no, got some teeth. I can't remember what we said in the episode 449, mm -mm. but I would imagine that uh, part of it would be like, okay, this is going to happen. Yeah, or at yeah, least yeah. that's what I thought. Yeah. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, they called it off. Then at first I thought it was oh, okay because they felt it doesn't make sense. But no, it's because the the CCCS uh, mm. issued its provisional ruling. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, do do you know much about the CCCS? Uh, not a lot, no. No. Uh, so, I mean, okay, it was established January 2005. Yeah. So, it's been around for almost 20 years. Um, and I think I had heard of it before, but like like what you mentioned just now, it yeah. always felt like it was just this, these people that just always make noise and nobody gives a shit. Like. Yeah. But if yeah. you go on their website, right, at any point in time, there's a bunch of reviews that are um, being done. Uh, and I mean, even this process of uh, Grab uh, wanting to buy Transcap, mm. they have a bunch, every time there's an announcement, it is all uh, very formally um, uh, documented here. La. And mm. you can trace the whole thing about everything they've released at every point in time. Yeah. Um, and they go on to explain, you know, like what their concerns are and what their recommendations are. Mm. Um, and uh, more about Section 4054 uh, prohibition under the Competitive Act and Merger Procedures. La. Yeah. So there is an organization that 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 kind of I guess has has the back of uh Singapore la. consumers la. consumers la. yeah mm. and then I mean they basically look at yeah enforcement of the competition act merger control yeah. advocacy consumer protection um but yeah interesting because I think even earlier this year uh or last year sorry there was the plan or mention that Grab wanted to acquire Food Panda yeah Food Panda yeah, that's right and. The thing is, right, you know, even earlier this year, mm. uh, yeah, just in April, there was a talk of the Grab Food Panda deal mm. that uh, Grab would be buying Food Panda. That fell through. That fell through. Yeah, and yeah. that fell through after also the CCCS raised some, like, uh, concerns. Mm. But I think how that was different was that it was just they raised some concerns. And even when the news finally was confirmed that it fell through, uh, it was more about the negotiations had failed. Yeah. As yeah. opposed to the CCCS giving... Uh, this provisional um conclusion mm. that made them pull out. Yeah, yeah. 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 Just discussions, all right. Yeah, yeah. But Whereas this one was already like they had already agreed, uh, both sides had agreed to this uh and acquisition. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, as like a, a user of Grab, uh which I assume you are, mm. uh what do you think when you keep on seeing every day in the news uh, they are trying to acquire, they're trying to merge with someone? Because they just acquired Choke. Yeah. You know, the, the restaurant, platform. yeah, online booking platform. Yeah. They acquired Choke. Mm. So what, what do you feel? Uh? Um, I mean, fundamentally, it was just a, 
it's just what the business was, like, right? They just need to get to a certain scale or size where they become too big to fail already, like, right? Um, they, they have their fingers in so many different pies, finance, uh, right hailing, obviously, food delivery, all these things that, that there's no way it can fail already. Like, mm. And it will always have access to capital, you know, uh, whether it's investors or, or just... Shares, uh, so, so the shares. Yeah, or, or even they're just so integral to, integral to the, the transport system that I think, yeah, where the authorities would have to step in whatever Grab uh, decides to do or so, like, right? Mm. Um, and I don't mean step in in necessarily a regulatory way, but uh, uh, but in the event that, that Grab is in trouble or what, it, spell, it will spell trouble for our our transport system or so, like, right? If Grab is in trouble? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they, they've they gotten to the point where they are that big now and uh, to... And you don't just hear from me, like you read online that they a lot of people feel that the services are still very lacking in terms of the quality of what they're delivering, like, right? Mm, mm, mm. So, but it, we we know it's never been their focus from day one. Uh. They were just pulling customers in with a lot of the discounts that like you, you were talking about. Yeah, and then but the the experience of using the app and all that, not necessarily the top foremost of their concerns. Uh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I mean, not super surprising that this is a lot of their strategy now, which is to acquire companies and, and, and you know, acquire market share, like, basically. Because they also had layoffs, right? Yeah. They, yeah. they laid off a thousand employees yeah. uh, earlier this year. Yeah. I think earlier this year or late last year. Mm. But, uh, I mean, I I guess it's one of those things, because even, like, with regards to, like, the income alliance kind of yeah. uh, potential sale, there's always this discussion of, like, okay, if this company doesn't do anything like this, it'll die. Mm-hmm. So are you okay with it dying? Or not? Mm-hmm. Are you okay with if Grab vanishes off the earth or not, Terence? Uh, as long as there are alternatives, lah, right? Uh, I think, yeah. But you then you cannot, you know, just choose one app. You decide you want food, then you need to get a Grab. Yeah. And you want to, I don't know, pay in installments. But maybe that's the false dichotomy that a lot of people are talking about. False la. dichotomy. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That that if you don't do something, uh, you know, which on surface is very cutthroat and very against what you you had always espoused before that, right? Mm. In the case of income insurance, for example, if you don't move away entirely from being a, a co-op or social enterprise kind of, or so, a business with a social mission, mm. then you will die, yeah. you know? There's a lot of that talk, right? And maybe we don't have full clarity on why they say that and, or the numbers or what's going on behind the scenes. But that's the narrative that I think uh, a lot of, um, you know, the people, you know, like Calvin Chang's and all that are saying, like, right? If they don't mm. stay competitive globally they will die like, right yeah and maybe that's what is not being very clear it's not being very clearly explained to the general public like why is it is such extreme it has to be like this dichotomy of like you know do this or die you know but i mean What's in between? is it right to demand that like we as lay people understand the true financial health of a company and, it, and why they are doing a certain decision you're asking is it okay that People are asking those questions. No, as in like you know how uh, there's the that there's this there's a few schools of thought. One school of thought is like you know certain things that you know governments companies do. Yeah, we don't need to know. Yeah, because if we know the full truth about everything, there's no way we can function. Like mm. let's say if if Grab is say okay, we need to do this because we are fucking bleeding money, Terrence. Yeah, we are gonna like our profit margins are shit. We are bleeding money. We need to expand to stay alive so that you can still order a burrito on Friday yeah. night without leaving your house. Yeah. But how would you feel about Grab after that? But are they bleeding money like that? I mean, they are publicly listed now, right? Yeah, yeah. La. Then there's a lot of avenues for them to raise capital if they need it. La. Yeah. And maybe it might, you know, uh, eat into the bottom line and everything, la, right? Mm-hmm. So so I, I think it's a bit different from the income insurance discussion where that one, a lot of people are reacting because of what NTUC income originally it's was. Before, la, yeah. And, yeah, and stated mission at the start, you see. Mm. Whereas Grab, we know it's a business, it's a capitalist company. And it also has its own like, mission of making money for its shareholders and things like that. Mm-hmm. So I think people would be unhappy or, or, or might might feel that, okay, if we if we lose, uh, you know, Grab's right-hailing service, I, I, I don't think they'll be as emotionally attached uh, right, compared to the, anti, uh, the income insurance issue. Uh. Yeah, and I think like what you say, as long as there are alternatives, uh, because even like if you look at the report by the CCCS, hmm. uh, the reasons they... they were against this sort of merger is because 
um, they are worried that there will be a stickiness of drivers to certain right hill platforms. Yeah. Because now if you're a transcap uh, driver, from what I understand is you don't need to stick to just Grab, yeah. just Tada or just uh, Gojek. Yeah. Uh, and you can, you know, then it's almost like a free market of incentives. You yeah. go where there are more incentives. Like. Yeah, yeah. But the fear was if Grab buys Transcap, they might say, okay, you know, you can still do this and all, but yeah. if you stay with us, because they were thinking of launching an app that integrates with the Transcap app. Yeah, yeah, so that yeah. was one concern. Another concern was that uh, there are driver supply shortages in general. Mm. So mm. if 2,500 drivers uh, go uh, kind of owned by this one bigger company, yeah. then it might lead to the other company suffering. Mm. Yeah. So in some way, they, are, they, they got our back. They, because if that yeah. is the case, then for like what we were saying, if Grab doesn't survive, that's okay as long as there are alternatives. Mm-hmm. But if there are no alternatives, then it's a shit show. Yeah, yeah. But also, that, that's it. Uh, people are also pointing out that uh, maybe the economic situation has changed also, mm. where this deal maybe makes less sense to Grab now, mm. a whole year later. Because originally, they were the timeline was that they would complete this deal by third quarter of 2020. Uh, 24 or is it 2023 or 2024? 2023. 2023, yeah. yeah. So by the end of the year, last year. Yeah. And now because of all these like regulatory uh, roadblocks, they've had to, I mean, they had to can the deal, like, right? Mm. But the global economy is also at a different place now than it was like maybe a year ago, like, right? In terms of travel and things like that. Mm. So maybe the economic situ- situation has changed such that it doesn't even make sense as a deal. And that could also be part of the reason why. Not entirely because of, of this uh, competitive watchdog stepping in. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that that could be the case also. Mm. And I mean, like when you think about big companies, I know for the longest time, Facebook was not profitable. Mm, mm. Uh, and it took a while to get there. Like. And I think now when, when the analysts look back at the acquisitions of Instagram and WhatsApp, those yeah. were game-changing. Like. Yeah, and they right. sounded crazy. I mean, WhatsApp was bought for like 18 billion or something. Yeah, right? and people were like, what the fuck? But Instagram, Instagram was one like billion. 1 billion and it was yeah. like 12 employees or something. Uh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And everyone was like, what crazy. the hell? But look at it now. Yeah, yeah exactly. And maybe, maybe at some point, Grab will have this magic formula or mix where they can actually hit profitability. Yeah. Like. Possibly, possibly. Uh, I mean, I, mean, I don't yeah. know. Like, I'm, I'm generally always averse to like super companies ha- owning everything. Yeah. Uh, I don't, I, I don't like that. Of course, you can argue a, a economies of scale and all, but I don't know. Like, uh, I think, uh, economies of scale have not benefited Singapore very much. Right? Every time, all the money launderers space. come with their money, you don't feel, you don't wake up. You're like, wow, <laughs> life is better because of all the money that has entered Singapore system. You, you don't, Terence. You mm-hmm. don't walk with a spring in your step. But what do you mean? Econ- but I mean economies of scale in the sense of like uh, consolidating yeah. market share. No, because one if you entity. think about it, like theoretically, economies of scale means that yeah, like you, if you want to build an app for X number of drivers, yeah. if you build it for a thousand drivers versus ten thousand drivers, yeah. it makes more sense for the ten thousand drivers because mm-hmm. all everything, the server cost, the development cost, and all. Once you spread it out across every driver, it decreases per driver as you yeah, yeah. increase the number of drivers. Yeah, yeah. So I think that is what uh, Grab is kind of, uh, it seems like that what they want to do. La. Yeah, correct, correct. Uh, their main strategy is economies of scale. La. But th- I mean, th- that's what I'm saying. It just mm. never really directly benefits the consumer, and, uh, if anything. That's uh, that's the general, the general take, my general take on it. La. Yeah. Uh, a bit generalized, yes. But um, I mean, in, in a lot of instances in Singapore, when there's less competition, uh, all these less, yeah, when competition is removed like, for whatever mm. reason, a lot of times I, I haven't, I, I don't see the benefit for it like, for consumers. Like. Yeah. yeah. And, and I think even when Grab wanted to buy Uber, some of the commitments by the Grab leadership was that, you know, we are committed to providing low fares and all yeah. that. But the yeah. moment it happened, I don't think we were just imagining it. Yeah. Uh, the promos all went away. Yeah. And you can argue that promos are never meant to be sustainable, right? Mm-hmm. It is just a campaign. But it doesn't, I mean, at the end of the day, the prices increase. Yeah. Correct, so correct. in this case, I mean, shout out to the CCCS. Yeah. For, uh, for you know, standing strong in spite of the headwinds. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, if you go to their website, actually, I was surprised. Like, if you go to, um, like, the things that are going on now mm. uh, they have they, they have active cases you know the cases that have closed and yeah. that's where I pulled up all the various documents about the um, uh, grab uh, the investigation into this whole proposed yeah. acquisition yep yep 
Yeah. So so I mean, yeah. interesting, ah, huh? CCCS. Uh, I mean, people online also saying, "Oh, is it because election coming? That's why all these things are oh. happening." But I, I would say maybe that's a bit of a stretch, lah. Firstly, we don't know exactly when the election is. Secondly, I don't even think this is really on the radar for a lot of people, mm. and especially now that it's been called off, like it's not like uh, you know, huge. Overwhelming news, lah, right? Mm, mm. Yeah. And I mean, the news actually came out on 11 July, lah. So you can't yeah. even say like, oh, they look at uh, income alliance and all that. Like, hey, it's not cannot. Yeah, 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 yeah. It came out 11 July. Yeah, and like, like we said, like, I think the income insurance one has a lot more. Uh, people are a lot more uh, sentimental mm. about income insurance than they are about uh, Transcap or anything. You're not like. sentimental about Transcap? It's been around for a long time, no? <laughs> I, mean, I was just reading comments about people yeah. comparing Transcap to other cap oh. companies. Like, even between them, like not people... Not the most popular. Yeah, they have they have very strong <laughs> thoughts about Transcap as well. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah, Transcap. Yeah, so they're like, okay, you want to go, you want to... You want to go and marry that person? Fine, go ahead and do it, you know. No one's mm. objecting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Uh, yeah, but yeah, man. Uh, but yeah, speaking of uh, objections, all uh, right. Uh, some young people in Singapore, or at least one young person in Singapore, uh, right, from one of the most uh storied and famous schools in Singapore. Uh, in fact, our alma mater, uh, right, mm. has uh come under fire, and a lot of people objecting to a costume that they wore for racial harmony day last week, lah. Uh. Um, and which is this school and what is this costume? Yeah. Uh, it is, uh, I mean, okay, so racial harmony, mm. uh, according to the RI principal, uh, Aaron Lowe, he said that, you know, the, stu- the students have been told that in commemoration of Racial Harmony Day, yeah. observed annually on July 21st, yeah. students were told that they could dress in traditional ethnic attire mm. to commemorate the event. Mm. Um but there was this photo that uh came out. Yeah. Uh, I think either between July seventeenth or July eighteenth, which is yeah. when they were told to to do the uh to wear what they wanted to wear. Mm. Uh yeah la, There was one guy wearing a delivery service costume. Food panda. Food panda. Yeah. With a mask that sh- that showed a uh, the face of a darker skinned man la. Yes. And then there was another boy next to him. Taking a photo. With his arm around him. Gleefully taking a photo. Gleefully. Uh, it seems like his hand was like one of those hover arms. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. now even in schools, you're not supposed to put your arms on other people's shoulders. Yep. yep. Uh, but R.I. said, yeah, two, two of them have been disciplined and counseled. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what is the what is the but here, Terrence? The big but is, um, was, it what, what, was what he did racist or wrong, uh? Um, uh, I think it, it's worth discussing a little bit because I think they, the principal also tried to explain the the thinking behind the kids' costume as well, right? Mm. Um, and he linked it to a, a basketball meme because apparently that mask is a mask of LeBron James, you know, the favorite basketballer, right? Oh, so they're the- saying that it's linked to a certain meme. Uh, and if anything, I'm paraphrasing here by saying that if anything, the kid did not understand the sensitivity of what he was wearing or doing, like what it might end up portraying. But it was meant to be a uh, a play on a on a basketball meme specifically, which I think oh. you and I actually we we have learned recently that there is a LeBron James meme on the internet now, right? Yeah, and it's uh, for millennials who know Rick Rolling, which was the practice of like tricking people into clicking a link and then it's a link towards Rick um, to play Rick Astley's Never Gonna Give You Up video like, mm-hmm. right, of him dancing. It's called Rick Rolling. Apparently, there's a, the Gen Z version is something to do with a LeBron James yeah. GIF. Like, right? yeah. I, actually, I did not see it, but what, what, what can you describe what the GIF was? You did not or see GIF? it? Yeah. Uh, because like we, we heard about it because there were these students that we were yeah, working yeah, with yeah. That's right. and they were explaining it to us yeah. like how I used uh. to explain to <laughs> yeah, Z-splaining la, yeah. Z-splaining to uncles. La. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I remember they showed us the phone and if I recall correctly, it's when you can be playing a video, then LeBron's face would just uh like fade into it and it's like him against a bright background mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. Like in the sky like that. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and then I was asking, so what do you mean this mean? Is it, yeah, you just, you know, you just watch a video, you see it, it's damn funny. Then both you and I, I thought you were, you were also looking, I was like, that's funny, man. Then I was like, oh, fuck. I'm I'm at that, that stage really. Like, <laughs> at that stage really. Um, cannot understand young people. <laughs> yeah, cannot understand. Yeah. So, I mean, the LeBron James... So, so here's what I think happened, right? Yeah. That maybe this LeBron James meme, 
you and I, we don't understand it. And a lot of general people don't understand it. But a young, to a young kid, just having a mask of LeBron James is damn funny by itself. Mm. Um, and, 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 you know, I, I don't know whether the idea of the wearing the food panda delivery costume is in a similar vein, also very irreverent kind of humor. Mm. Uh, but somehow paired together, then, you know, people read uh, very specific cultural things about, you know, in, about Singapore, the situation in Singapore into into the into the irreverent joke lah, that mm. this person was putting out there. And that's why I thought, hmm, interesting discussion about whether, how racist you think this is? Lah. I actually think it is racist. <laughs> because, okay, because, okay, this is interesting because yeah. last week, we, you, you and I, yeah. uh, for context, we were speaking at a school. Right? For racial harmony. For racial harmony yeah. day, yeah. And yeah. um, there was a certain question came out about our racial preferences in dating racist, like, right? Yeah. And you gave a very strong answer, like, right? It yeah. was. Uh, I said, I, I think it is racist. Like. Mm. Uh, and, but you also gave an equally strong uh, worded answer. Correct, correct. The on surface sounds very uh, very angry. Hey, you but don't actually, it's very, it's very nuanced. No, no it's you don't get disqualified. Mine also yeah. was nuanced, okay? Mine also I, was nuanced. I said, I didn't say it was racist. I said it was stupid. Yeah, yeah. or very nuanced, Terrence. Yeah, yeah. So was, nuanced. But I said stupid in the sense that you're closing off yeah, your yeah, options. No, you cannot explain. You cannot yeah, explain. Yeah, okay. The word, the fine, word. Fine, yeah. Okay, the fine, fine, fine. Stupid. So <laughs> this is the second time in two weeks that Harish is using the word racist to describe what something yeah. a student has and done. And let me, let me give you the context why I think this one it is clearly okay. veers in the, the realm of racism. Okay. Because this wasn't a Halloween activity. Okay. This was racial harmony mm. where the students were encouraged to wear ethnic wear. Mm. So I think that is the game changer, Terrence. Uh, if this was Halloween and they wore that, then I'd be like, oh, fuck. I mean, it still feels a bit racist. Yeah. But it's not that clear cut. But it's not racial harmony. Mm. Ethnic wear. So first of all, uh, what he's wearing, the delivery uh, food panda costume, is there ethnic wear by any means? Mm. No, no. No, right? So he's wearing it and then together with that, the LeBron James thing, I think I think there's, there's there's some elements of of uh, racism there. Like. Okay, so yeah. for you, for you're, you, you're, you're, no, you're assuming that uh, he's trying to to say something racial about it, like, right? Yeah, yeah. But what then? Why the food panda costume? I mean, because like uh, I think what he's trying to get at is that uh, in his POV, maybe, mm. maybe mm. that for the majority of people who work in a job like that mm. tend to be darker skin, lah. Like. That's what I would take from a picture, lah. La. La. Minorities, lah. Mm. That's what I would take. My, you know, my simple mind. <laughs> my simple mind. I know, I know. You are above and beyond race and gender. Race glasses, you see individuals. <laughs> you see individuals Racial regardless. Lens. You're like, oh, that person's a woman. Oh, I, I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. uh, I just see the, the, the personality. Yeah. But, uh, but for you, do you know the race of the, the person under the mask? No. Yeah. What if? What if? He is. Oh, no, not, I mean, just from his hand, I don't th think he's Indian, right? Oh, yeah. But yeah. there are also, you know, fair-skinned minorities amongst us as well, right? Yeah. What if he's not Chinese or not the majority race? I mean, then I would still say he's... We still say he's racist. racist. Uh, uh, mm. You? Um, because we had that revelation about the LeBron James meme. Yeah. And how we were so bamboozled by it, right? Mm. I... I, I, not, not that I, I, I don't think it's offensive. I think in the context of Singapore and all, it, it, this looks very offensive, like, right? Mm. But I do feel maybe it's just this, it could have been a kid who basically just took this whole irreverent joke a little too far. Mm. That's that possibility. Like. I'm not discounting the fact, like, because mm. the fact that the principal also specifically stated that it's, it's based on this basketball meme. I'm assuming he's had a talk with the kid and also was trying to understand what the kid's motivations were behind the costume, right? Mm, mm, mm. So, similar to our very heated discussion in that, that school that day about the idea of saying that something is racist versus saying something is silly or stupid, right? Mm. I feel the word racist um, almost adds too much uh, intention to what the, the person is doing, right? Yeah. When I say the person was stupid uh, or being stupid, I was saying that you yourselves are being, you are, you are closing off your own options by having racial preferences. You're not allowing yourself to experience the full breadth of human experience. Mm -hmm. That's why I think you're stupid. Mm. But I wasn't saying that, I wasn't saying that you, uh, are, you are a bad person, that you are racist, you know? Because the word racist yeah, somehow, it's very loaded, yeah, it's very loaded, puts this, this connotation that that person's a bad person at heart. Yeah. So I, in, in, this, in some sense, I see this yeah. in here, I'm like, 
there's a possibility he's not that bad person. He's just someone who didn't understand the ramifications of what he was putting together. Yeah. And, and you know, silly lah, stupid lah. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. But I mean, I would also say that stupid is also not a light word lah. And you can say that the way of thinking is stupid, but ultimately, yeah. you are in some way indirectly calling him stupid. Correct, correct. But when yeah. you were 17 years old, yeah. you did, we all did a lot of stupid things, yeah. right? Yeah. And I would say probably when I was 17, I also did some racist things. Yeah, so, so I'm saying, yeah. but you would, you know, being 17 years old, being labeled like, racist, yeah. xenophobic, uh, you know, things like that. Yeah, I think I, I do agree. And that was something that came about after that session also where we talked with the one of the students who came up. Yeah, yeah. I also realized that the word ra- racist, yeah. they, it is a very loaded term. I'm very, 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 I'm very proud that you backtracked on your word. Lah, in the, in the I'm discussion. always, yeah. always <laughs> open. Yeah, I always open. I'm yeah. also same for you. You yeah. also <laughs> acknowledge that staying out stupid of is course, the best idea. Stupid is, but, yeah. but I, I, what, what I was trying to explain to him is that that yeah, I, I do feel that you are when you have racial preferences, you you yeah, like, you limit your own, own options. Uh, and and yeah. why would you want to limit your own options in if yeah, like. you're trying to choose from a you know a broad group of people to, yeah. for a future yeah. partner? Like, yeah. Yeah. I mean to give context also, I was saying why that is racist, because from hearing him talk, uh it was that he was assuming that a person of a given race yes, behaves yes. like every other kind of singular instance of that race, mm. which I do feel like that is the Correct. problem yeah. with racism. That, that is racism. That is right, racism. Because yeah. yeah. I think yeah, subsequent examples, it became clear to me also that, it, you know, he he saw certain things and then yeah. he, he extrapolated, extrapolated certain um, certain uh, stereotypes about the about how people yeah. of a certain race behave, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, but in this case, I mean, I, I, feel, I feel, of course, I yeah. would not approve of something like that if I was a principal or a teacher. But, um, yeah, there's a lot of online vitriol uh, directed at him and against RI people, RI boys, right? Mm. Uh, and how do you feel about that? Lah? I mean, like, okay, so so one big question was like, uh, you know, like these people are what, 17? Yeah, probably 17 or 18 Se- max. 17, yeah. 18, right? I mean, not that young, right? And I, uh, I, I think maybe as a as a millennial, I'm like, wow, you know, kids these days very connected, very in tune with like the the so- social norms, what people uh, are passionate about. Yeah. Uh, but maybe that's not really the case, lah. Maybe because of like people living in echo chambers and all, certain things that you think are okay might not mm-hmm. actually be okay in a broader context. But yeah. within your world, you think it's okay, lah. Because this one taking a photo, and I don't know how it was leaked. It appeared on Reddit, lah. Yeah. Right. Um, I don't know how it was leaked. Probably means it was shared somewhere. Yeah. Uh, and it ended up here. I always wonder how how does this how what sequence of events led to this? Mm. Is it because they knew it was going to cause backlash? Yeah. But let me wear a mask because my identity ultimately is hidden. But is, but because he wore the mask, that's why it became a problem. Like yeah. I think if he just wore a food panda costume and just took a photo, no one would bat an eyelid, right? But I mean, then people would be like, "If it's racial harmony, why are you wearing a food panda costume, bro?" If it's Halloween, I think it's different. True lah. Yeah. But 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 then I asked you that question to explain why the food panda thing was offensive because it kind of uh points towards there, there's some element of us uh you know dissecting the the context of Singapore and then applying it to the to the person's thought process like behind yeah, the costume yeah, like, right. Yeah. But you know, being seventeen years old, it yeah. could be a really just be an instance of oh, this is interesting. You know, I mean, like in school last time, there were people in my class who would peel off the fire extinguisher stickers that had all the safety warnings on them and then paste them on the files and all. And they'd be so proud of it. Like it was the coolest thing that ever, like, right? Yeah. I never understood that because you kind of like, I mean, in some ways it's damaging uh, public property or, but it was just like, why is this even a thing? Like, you know, why is it even cool? But you're 17. You know? But it's cool because you, that one I can totally see. Like you can, I think you can even break it down. Why that's cool? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, you just very logical thing. Why you do this? It makes you stand up. It makes you feel like a rebel, like a badass. I mean, I also don't agree that you yeah. should do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can understand, you know, the steps someone would take mm. to get there in the hopes of being cool. Yeah. So that same does thing does not apply to me here. Like. The food panda costume. Uh, I just wearing a food panda costume not not funny. For right racial or? harmony day. Okay. Okay. For racial harmony day. But maybe harmony maybe day. okay in the context maybe it was okay maybe I'm. I'll, Obviously, I'm stretching here because yeah, so yeah. I'm scratching. But I just want to put it out there that maybe this thought process of this kid is like, 
you know, oh yeah, you know, screw this, like having to wear a costume all this. I'm just going to anyhow wear anything and I, that, you know, my friends find funny, skibbity, skibbity, mm. and then just wear a food panda costume, la, you know, whatever. Mm. That is, is literally that. La. And then, it just so happened, he was like, hey, no, you, you yeah, got a exactly. role. It could literally be some, hey, I also got this LeBron James mask, hey, wear this, I wear it, then funny, eh? and then they just take a photo and boom, that's it already, la. suspended from school. Just like that, he's suspended. Is uh, it? I mean, they said disciplinary Count, actions. Discipline I think the the school counsel, hasn't right? the school hasn't come forward and explained what disciplinary actions. But uh, I mean, it, for seventeen year old to be all over the news and all that, it's 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 not easy, la. But also, I guess <clears throat> people are also taking notice of this because in twenty twenty, there was an old photo of some students, um, uh, RJC yeah. students, yeah. Uh, wearing blackface, la, Right, uh, made as a joke, la, Right, and that got leaked uh, a few years later in 2020 mm. La, mm. and they had to come out and apologize and all these things so yeah. maybe in that context people feel like Raffles institution in general has a uh, issue with uh, racial harmony yeah. I mean there's all you know it, there's always claims that you know it's elitism uh, you know nepotism and stuff like that even when we went there back then also people loved to hate on uh, R.I. La. Yeah, 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 right. People lose, and I think it will always be the case. Mm-hmm. Uh, but now, like, yeah, like, especially when these kind of things happen, because it's RI, there'll be more flag, lah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I mean, I still, yeah, I still think this one is like, oh, then he's racist, lah. No, I wouldn't. Hang say, him. No, no, no. Okay, so I wouldn't say he's racist, but the <coughs> action is racist. Mm. Is there a difference there? You can be ignorant about doing something that yeah. might come across as Correct. being racist. So yeah, so I don't know. Harsh punishment. I don't think harsh. Uh. Then what? Like suspension? No? Caning? I don't think suspension. Uh. Mm. Counseling? Uh, counseling. Yeah. I think just like, I mean, okay, also because these are older kids. Yeah. Right? Uh, They are clearly, okay, academically, like, decent. Yeah. So, I don't think it should be, what, expelled or suspended mm. or anything. Like, if yeah, that happens, yeah. then I'll be like, no lah, like, that's, that's over the top lah. Mm. You so? Yeah, to me, um, he needs a, the, he needs a better understanding of what uh, racial insensitivity is, like, right? Force him go work as a delivery <laughs> rider. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> That's the last thing you, you want. You go and see all the people there. Like, tell me, you only got one race, is it? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. Yeah, yeah, actually, there's another point also, like, right? That, uh. that uh, I think if, if that boy, if that this kid has a, has a, if he really thinks that only like certain races do delivery riding, then he really is not seeing the full picture. Because, like, mm. They are all. They come from all walks of life. Yeah. Right, people who do delivery or, or or even private hire driving and things like that, mm. So so there is some element of like uh, maybe he even like um, elitism, la, Right, where he thinks that because he's from a good school and all that, this is something funny, la, You know, making fun of people who in the service industries and things like that, mm. So that I think also is a very big problem. Um, yeah. So and he, yeah, la, the not understanding the sensitivities of race, especially in a place like Singapore where, you know, things can get very charged, right? If you don't, um, if you don't, if you're not sensitive about it. So yeah, I think in that sense, uh, this kid needs, uh, I think he needs help, right? In terms of, he needs more education about these things. Mm. But maybe not like this, like the harsh punishments. I think some people online, I see they're calling out to like, show his face, uh, dox him, uh, what's his name, things like that. I'm like, wow, that's... Tough man, and I mean, just explain to him because okay, let's say giving the benefit of the doubt, it was a series of events like you know you mentioned that ultimately led to this. Yeah. Uh, maybe it's just also like getting him to understand okay how this can be perceived. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not saying like oh you must always care about everybody's feelings. Yeah. But this generally is not the best Correct. best look to be online. Uh. So for you, um, LeBron James mask, someone hands it you, you can you say I can never wear it like Why is not? It? I can't. Why well, can't? Why well, can't? So is the coupling of the mask with the <laughs> delivery uh, uh uniform on racial harmony day? Somebody give oh, me okay. a mask, I'll wear it. Okay, okay. Ah, cool. what's wrong? Okay. You you you? Ah, for you how? <laughs> People can see your your I wouldn't wear it, yeah, I wouldn't wear it. La. Oh, you wouldn't wear it? Yeah. Why? Just the context of uh in Singapore and everything, la, right. Huh? Where you mean someone can, give you on the street? You wouldn't look, wear people it. don't even there was barely even mentioned that that it was a LeBron James mask. Uh, people they just don't see, know. They just see, they a, see blackface. Yeah, blackface. Uh, and then it's merely your your majority race trying to Oh, that's to true. Like, I don't think you can wear yeah, it. I don't someone think take can, a photo, yeah. uh, exactly, waiting it. at a traffic light. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, look at this fucker, you know. <laughs> yeah. 
So yeah, you want to wear like your basketball jersey wow, or right. whatever. Your, if there's a picture, can you imagine of like construction workers working mm, on the road yeah. who maybe happen to be darker skin yeah. and then you at a traffic light waiting with this LeBron, wow, you yeah, cancel you know, that yeah. shit already. Exactly, yeah. That's how fraught this whole like racial tensions are. And, and wow, I don't think you can wear I don't think you can wear, yeah. So it, it's, it's, I mean, it's just how it is today, lah, right? And I, I think, of course, you can say free speech, whatever, th- things like that. But, yeah, lah, it's just very uh, a very tricky situation when it comes to things about skin colour and all. Lah. Okay, I think I know I, what, what I'm going to get you for your birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're going to dress as for Halloween, really. <laughs> Here's a costume that I can wear that you can't. Yeah. <laughs> That is true, man. That yeah, is yeah. true. No, my my Halloween costume is, is quite fixed this year. Already, I'm pretty sure. What? Uh, some sweet woman with a cigarette. Oh, which is popular cigarette. Yeah, yeah. Popular cigarette. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, interesting, interesting discussion. We'd love to hear people's thoughts, uh, right? Yeah. And uh, please don't dox the the young kid, lah. Uh, yeah. He's, yeah. Do he's got a bright future ahead of him. Uh, of course, people are so angry when you say that, right? yeah, 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 correct, correct. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I think I, I, I really think that it could have been one of those Gen Z skibidi jokes just taken too far. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. That one, that one. Uh, I, I, I can see, know. I can see all the younger people cringing as I, as yeah. I say that. They are messaging <laughs> their friends like, "Wow, Lawe, this millennial I'm working with, wow, chill out, man, yeah, chill out." Yeah. Uh. But yeah, um, on to slightly happier things. Yeah, what is your one short comment? Uh, my one show comment was uh, one from another, from our episode 548, mm. Um, mm. Uh, where, I mean, it wasn't anything to do with the topics. It was on Reddit. It was from either underscore yak5988. Mm. Whether they have uh, posted before, but uh, they said, hi guys, interesting topic. Love that Terrence started the podcast talking about playing football and how his mates were chatting about the pain following the match, especially mm. when the players are slightly older. It really struck a chord with me about a football league we organized and had success with. We are gearing up for season two. Mm. Uh, Most of our participants are of the older age. Really great that they're participating, putting efforts towards our concept. It's not a normal league. Um, And uh, yeah, so I think there's a Facebook page also uh, for the group. So so yeah, like uh, kudos kudos to them. Oh, it's the Fit Fives League. Mm, mm, mm. Oh, so it's a league they've set up for, I guess, older folk. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Good job, guys. Yeah. Uh, so that's my yeah. It's, it's not only a comment; they actually have something going. So mm, mm, mm. You, if you click on the comment, you can get a link to their to their Facebook page. Yeah. I guess anyone who's interested in playing football. Oh, so literally, it says this page is for f- the Fit Fives League, which is for players that have a BMI of thirty and above. <laughs> oh, that's that's uh, pretty cool. Like oh yeah, that is interesting. Huh? yeah. So it's like uh, okay. 30 over 30. 30, 30 <laughs> over 30. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay, okay. And I guess maybe the goal is to be disqualified from the league because your BMI went under 30. Yeah. Then you, yeah, that means you, you sort of promoted. Like, promoted. promoted. <laughs> <laughs> wow, but promoted. solid, man. It yeah. is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, cool. Good job. Oh, they actually do do post like winners of the most weight loss in a season. Oh. Third, you know, oh, that's the person awesome. lost 7.65 kg or before and after photo. Wow. So they celebrate the weight loss. Yeah. I think that's great. La. That's great. Yeah. Wow, solid, guys. It reminds me of those days in BMT when, you know, um, you you would I mean you would see the obese uh, company uh, soldiers like right yeah and a lot of them were actually lost like crazy amounts of weight oh, yeah, BMT yeah. and it's uh as much as people like last time always like make fun of obese uh, company and things like that but it's really quite something like right to see this so to see these people actually exercise and and lose weight over uh, just short period of a few months uh. Wow, this is uh, solid. Inspiring. The, the, the winner lost 12.7 kg in the season. Wow. That's good crazy. job, guys. Good job, good job. Good job. Keep, keep uh, doing it, man. Yeah, that's my one show, uh, one show comment. Uh, cool. What about you? Uh, my one show comments from the last, uh, it's on YouTube from the last video that we did about income insurance being sold to Alliance. Mm. Um, H. Lee too said, don't agree that opposing the acquisition equates to being against capitalism, which is probably something that we just said uh, in jest or so that, right? Hmm. It is precisely the free market mechanism that results in market failures and hence the need for social enterprises to exist. So I think what they're saying here is that social enterprises exist to cover the blind spots of uh, the free market capitalism, right? Mm. Uh, the implicit social contract is that these enterprises are allowed to be inefficient from a market standpoint because they do not inherently prioritize profits over social welfare. 
Mm. So having an acquisition will make it more efficient, but it would eliminate the need for these firms to exist in the first place. So I think mm. essentially he's saying that, um, yeah, the, we, we have these social enterprises because we know that free market capitalism does not, uh, does not in its efficient hand and everything, mm. does not cover a lot of these blind spots. Uh, and so we need these social enterprises to exist and they shouldn't be held to the same standard as as um, you know, capitalist businesses that are entirely about optimizing profit. Mm. So it's a false comparison to to put like uh, income insurance next to, you know, a global insurance say that hey, you know, they are so efficient and you need to be more efficient also. La. So but I thought like from reading the comment they were they were hinting at that it's almost like um if a social enterprise can function profitably and efficiently mm. as a for profit, then it should be the case. But it's not, but that's what they're saying that it's not a social, it's not a for-profit entity. It is, it is, Income and always started, yeah. It and started, started as a, as a co-op, la. and that's what its original mission was. But la. the moment it got corporatized, yeah. then it stopped being a co-op. Uh, but the understanding was that it was still supposed to mm. fulfill a lot of the social gaps, la, right? And mm. even in Tarman's answer in 2022 is that it will, it would still be a big priority for them, la, right? Mm. So, even being corporatized, you know, I think there was this understanding that they would still have a social mission. No? Uh, and now the, removing it. For the moment, yeah, like, it's not part of the... Maybe that's one thing that anytime a company corpor- corporatizes from co-op to mm. uh, like a proper corporate, right? Yeah. You know, they can always say, we commit to mm. functioning the same way, but... Uh, but who's watching the Watchmen? Uh? Who's watching the Watchmen? Yeah. Uh, but yeah, man. Yep. Uh, all right. But yes. So, uh, what is your one shock thing? Uh, my one shock thing. So, like, uh, I think a one shock thing a few weeks ago was uh, Childish Gambino, mm. uh, releasing like a new album soon. Yeah. Uh, and he released like audio versions of the songs on the album on his YouTube. Sure. But there was um, I think the first official music video for one of the songs, Lithonia. Yeah. So, I think if you watch it. It starts off you. He's singing like in a way that you wouldn't hear him sing before, like, like mm. uh, emo, emo, emo rock, uh. Yeah. But then, like, there's some. It ends off in a very surprising way, la. Mm. So that's all I would say, la. And I think it's just a, it's it's just a cool video, la. Okay. Like it starts off, I was like, hey, shit, what the hell is he doing? This sounds, sounds like not like him, and sounds like a lot of other bands out there. Mm. But by the end, I'm like, okay, la, this is this is cool. I see, I see. Uh, yeah. But so, no, no spoiler. It, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's oh, okay, a twist, okay. la, but I guess now also you, you say you you will watch it with some expectation, but it's just yeah. interesting. La, how you, you need to be a Childish Gambino fan to appreciate uh, it. I don't think so. Oh, okay. I don't think so, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, Lithonia, it's on his YouTube channel. Okay, cool. cool. Yeah. Uh, just staying on the theme of like uh, football, mm. um, there's a video that, that got fed to me recently, probably because I was looking at a lot of football videos in anticipation of playing football last weekend. Uh. Mm. This is called The Reality of Playing at the Bottom of English Football. And it's on this channel called Location Football, where they basically, um, they got, you know, a guy who never barely plays football to go and check out and join one of the the, the lowest tier football clubs in England, uh, right? I think Division 5 of some of some part of some league, some really, really low ass league in England. It's called Essington Stanley. Mm. That's the name of the club. And it's quite interesting because he joins the club for a match and um, they, they literally, the chairman and the manager literally sign him for one game, right? Mm. To play one game against uh, someone who's in like two divisions higher. And uh, he just, just goes there to check out what the facilities are, what the showers look like, uh, where do each of the players come from, why do they want to play in a shitty team and, and mm. things like that. And uh, yeah, and then they play a match against that that uh, higher division club, and they you know spoiler alert, they they do they lose lah, right? But it's I think it, the more interesting is just in the whole prep for the whole process. He just goes through how they do their warm ups, like what is the why how the club chairman applied for you know to become a club under in England, and, and, and why is he they a do player it, himself, like, like the chairman. No, no, the guy who made the video. No, no, no. He hasn't played like oh. any level of competitive football, oh. any level, like even Saturday like football league kind of thing for like 20 over years. He's like in his late 30s and already. Like. Mm. So it's just interesting to watch because then you really understand, like I think we talked about this with Sean by like what football means to a community, like, right? And and uh, a lot of the people who are playing, they are just they just enjoy playing football. 
and they just wanted to, you know, they, they just sign up because they want to have a chance to play football like every weekend and have something to train with, train mm-hmm. for and, and look towards. So, yeah, the goalkeeper is not like, he's not like super fit or anything. He's like just a regular bloke and like, you know, each other talk about, oh, I got to ask for off pass from the wife to be able to come play the <laughs> game or like, you know, like things like that. Lah. So it's quite fun and interesting and, and, uh, and just seeing that, yeah, lah, these people, they're really playing at, uh, at a level that is really like, uh, just for fun, you know, mm. and but they still take it very seriously. They train, they have tactics and all these kind of things. And um, yeah, you know, hopefully one day we'll see As- Essington Stanley, you mm. know, play against Premier League, <laughs> Premier League or FA Cup or something, like, play against one of the big clubs. And yeah, some of the comments are very nice. They say, I'm from a, oh, we need more content like this. I'm from a non-footballing nation where football is not as famous as other sports. So having a football team where you can play regularly is a blessing and I'm very happy to see that people in England can enjoy football without having all these issues. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, which in Singapore, we don't have, right? Yeah, if you want to play at like uh, the Fit Fives level, or like BMI above 30 or what, it's like, oh, it's because it's a weight loss thing, but it's not not like a competitive oh, thing. Actually, there you know? are those leagues, right? the ESPZ and stuff. I don't know whether ESPZ yeah. is still there, yeah, but yeah. there are those, those weekend leagues that you can sign up for. Ah, okay. But okay. it's not like, I don't think you can, if you do well, you can promote, 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 yeah, yeah, promote yeah. all the way to like the... But, but this one is like... You can, a, can, right? You can, you can. So it's like... The club chairman talks about oh, how he went to the website of the FA and then like he just followed like what he needs to do to set up a club. Then they set up a club and they just they pay out their own pocket to for yeah. referee for matches and things like that. Uh-huh. So it's just quite charming to see how like uh, grassroots uh, football is in the UK. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, we we see the top tier, but we never understand how what it means to like the the towns and the villages yeah, yeah. at the bottom. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's cool. Uh. Yeah. That's and cool. how long is the video? 15 minutes. Oh, yeah. cool. Cool, cool. Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, so another week of three podcasts. Wow. Another week gone by. Yeah. Uh, Hopefully we have some interesting guests coming next uh, week. Yeah, we well. do, we do. Uh, and yeah, we're looking forward to that. Yeah. So, uh, I mean, as always, if you enjoyed this podcast, it'd be great if you could share it with someone else. Remember to follow us on social media, hit subscribe, leave us a review on Spotify. And if you want to work with us, check out ministryoffunny.com to see our portfolio and also contact us. Hell yeah. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody.